It's real simple. For me, I come off the block. I come from drug trafficking. I come from, I have three drug charges. I have a A2 felony in New York that I caught when I was 18 years old for a quarter kilo of coke and a load of 38. And I also have a drug trafficking charge in Maryland, several charges that got dropped through a legal search and seizure. Um, and I had a secret indictment in New Jersey. So I understand the streets. I, I've been down that road 10 years. Like, so a third of my life I spent in the streets and I get, um, which is how I've excelled, excelled so much in real estate is that I get basic business principles. And that's all real estate is. It's the easiest business model in the world that most of you are familiar with. Nobody's ever broke it down to you so you can really actually get it. So real simple, right? We got real estate over here. We got a dope game over here. Dope game meaning coke, weed, heroin, pills. You pick your poison, all right? We know where this ends us. This this leads to a few good times, maybe. Maybe some nights in the club, maybe a couple cars, maybe a couple watches, but you're gonna end up dead or in jail. Somebody's gonna tell on you or somebody's gonna shoot you. I mean, it's just how it goes. So there's a lucky small percent that's not even worth gambling that might make it out. And you still hoping on that one dream, that one lotto dream, that you gonna be that guy that made it out or that girl that made it out the dope game. To do what though? You only can leave the game, you don't leave the game retired, you have to leave the game and actually get into something. So I'm not perpetuating you using dope money to do this. I'm not telling you how to wash your money. I'm not doing anything illegal, feds. All I'm trying to do is show you the correlation that if you drop this mentality, how you can be successful in this world because you already have the skills. You just don't realize it yet. So in both worlds, in the dope world or trap world and in real estate, you have your product, right? So real estate, our product is houses. We call it inventory, properties. Whether it's two family, three family, apartment building, strip mall, it's all houses, it's all product. In a dope game, we got birds, right? We got pounds of weed, we got pills. Nevertheless, it's all product, right? So, if we get our product, there's a connect. In real estate, our connect, our banks, motivated sellers, probate list, uh, any kind of distressed property, houses on the MLS, all those things, right? In the list, sellers, REOs, auctions, all that's products. In adult game, you got your connects, right? You got your connect, you got your plug. It might be somebody out of state, out of town, whatever it is, could be out of the country, depending on how blessed you got to get a plug. Good for you. Now you got the plug, now your risk of going to jail just increased even more. So, now for our product, in order to make money, we got to identify a market, right? So. You now own the product, but the only way to make money on that product is to actually sell it. So in real estate, we have a couple different ways that we can make product, right? So you got your slow grind, right? So in real estate, we got a slow grind. Your slow grind is buying and holding property, right? So that means we got our property, and now we got, oops, my bad. Now we got tenants. We got a fence, a two family matter of fact. So now we got a two family house and we got tenants. They are bringing us in rent. We are making even on our mortgage, living for free. Maybe you live on one side and renting out the other, or maybe you're renting out both and you're getting both income. And over time, this property will go up in value, right? And you will make your money, get tax benefits and all of the great perks of real estate. Now in the dope game, we got a slow grind and that's your block money. You don't have enough money yet, you don't have enough clout yet, you don't have a, better, a good enough connect to actually sell weight, you don't have enough money invested to sell weight, so you gotta move work on the block. So you are moving work on the block, you are standing on a corner all day, every day, trying to pitch pills, weed, or coke, and you are making some kind of money, right? And you're hoping that eventually it leads to you being a big boy. That's what you're hoping in the game. Here, you're hoping that this property increases in value 
And one day, the equity in your property is so much that you can now refinance or get a home equity line of credit and tap into this equity for you to be able to flip and buy more houses. You're hoping that your drug business grows so you can be able to be get more work. Same thing, you're hoping that your real estate business grows, your equity grows, so you're gonna get more houses. Now, also, so this is our slow grind, right? So this is our buy and hold model. Now over here, we got our, our wholesale model. Sometimes in real estate, just like in a drug game, you don't have no money for real. You starting off from scratch, you trying to figure out how do I get my chips up, but you got connects and you got knowledge, right? So if you got the knowledge, just like in real estate as in the block, if you got knowledge on the block, you're here. You got a sad face, because you're broke. But your big bro, he got a smiling face, because he got work. He has to connect. But you have no money to holler at the connect. But you know these guys over here, they all move work from your hood. So you know what you do, you holler at your connect to get the prices. You know the prices is 32. You tell these guys the prices are 35. You keep your 3,000 in the middle, all by wholesaling the work with no cash or no credit, or you don't need credit for that, or you don't. You need street credit, right? Wholesaling and real estate, the same thing, except in this, you can go to jail. So now if you get locked up for serving one of these guys, because this punk right here is a snitch. You just served him a bird or a pound or pills to this guy. These guys was cool, but they didn't even know their man was a snitch. And now you going to jail, you was broke to start with. You got no bail money, no commissary money. Your girl not coming to visit you. Your baby mama mad at you. And your life just turned to shit. All while you trying to make money doing something illegal you had no business doing in the first place. Or the connect, he snitched on you. He give you away because you're the little guy and nobody gonna believe you. And this is how he's staying to connect because he's pissed on you and you're going to jail. And you got no bail money, no commissary money, nothing to come home to. And you're gonna work in jail for 40 cents a day. Cutting down trees, mowing lawns, or doing something stupid like that, mopping floors. Right? So you figure out that. Wholesaling, however, in real estate, you get to be the middleman, sad face, you got no money. You might have learned on YouTube. You might have went to the Jay Morris Academy. I don't know. However, you learned the real estate game. You learned that if you find inventory, motivated sellers who need to get rid of their house, and you got cash buyers over here, or your big bro, Jay Morrison, who has a real estate fund with Deshaun Jackson and a couple of other athletes and some other foreign guys, you say, hey, Big bro, I got a motivated seller. Let me holler at you. This house, this seller wants 30,000 for it in Detroit. But I know that what you told me about finding comps and rehab costs, that once this house is repaired, it could go for, it needs 10,000 in work. So you'll be in it for 40 and it'll go for 80. So it's an $80,000 spread there. So, or you're gonna tell me is, hey, big bro, let me get five grand for putting this deal together for you. And you can keep the other 35,000 profit for you and your team. We're happy we got $35,000 profit from a, from a, from a easy distressed sale. The seller's happy they got rid of their property. You're happy because you just made $5,000, just as much you would have made from a drug flip, except you have no risk in this situation but your time, effort, hustle, and energy. And now you build some relationships with some good dudes, you have a seller or investor or a realtor you just broke bread with, and now your smile just turned upside down, facing no jail time, no 40 cents an hour job, nobody trying to blow your head off, and you made some money with no cash or credit in real estate wholesaling, right? Now, some of y'all, you balling out there, you are the connect, you the man, you in your phantom, you are chilling, Life is good. You got all the girls with all long hair around you. You just, life is just great. You just chilling. The dope game is gonna last forever. You gonna be the one to beat the odds, right? And you got your car. You chilling, right? So, same principle. I'm chilling too. 
I'm the big man in real estate. I'm the connect. I got the properties. Big TG smile, right? I'll say the girls. You can have the girls. I'm trying to get some money. So, how I, as the big man on campus, facilitate moves in real estate is that I just play a bigger game. So now I'm looking at apartment buildings. And I'm looking at leverage. So I'm looking at if I can get an apartment building and maybe I got 300,000 sitting to the side, I know that through a bank, I can get a $900,000 apartment building. But the great part about it is the apartment building, once it's fully rented, and once I renovate the units, maybe for another 150,000, right? So now I'm in it for a million fifty in my apartment building. But now I know it's worth, right? After I renovate the units, it's called forced appreciation, right? So I learn how to force my value in my apartment building because it brings me cash flow from my 20 tenants. And I get um, principal pay down, meaning that I pay my mortgage down fast because I got all my tenants paying down my mortgage for me. And I bought it right. So now I already got equity in the deal when I bought it. So I might be in it for, what I say, 300? Oh no, I, I, 300 of my own money. I got a loan for, for the rest for the 600, paid 150 to renovate it. So I'm in it for 150, but now this apartment building is worth 1.8, right? So I just made an $800,000 foot on an apartment building that I get cash flow from monthly, that pays for my car note, pays for my living expenses, goes up in value every year, my mortgage goes down every year, and I get tax benefits, and I don't gotta worry about nobody gonna blow my head off or going to jail making 40 cents a day. So I'm winning as a big boy. This big boy, he you balling in the club, you got birds for days, it's all good, you effing up some commas, and then out of the many people you serve, you got 40 phones, you think it's all right, all you do to stand up dudes, Nobody snitching, but you ain't know this girl right here was messing with the guy right here that was plotting on you, and she got your brains blown out. Now you died. You was up just a week ago, now you're dead, and you got a beautiful funeral. You got no life insurance, nothing to leave behind for your kids. Your boys ran through all your money. She took all your watches, and... This is the life of a dope boy. So every skill that you learn in a drug game, you can apply to the real estate game and do it just as fluently, even more, because you already got a hustle. You just don't got the knowledge. You don't got the know-how. And you don't got the patience to actually sit down and learn the game. You'd rather speed through life living a rap song that you know ends bad for everybody, from Nino Brown to Frank Lucas to the Rich Porter to Alpo to every to Scarface to every major drug dealer you know, it always ended bad. But we still are insane because we do the same things over expecting different results. You're freaking insane. So for me, I did 10 years in the streets. I get it. I made a lot of money. I did my numbers. But I also got jammed up a bunch of times. And by God's grace, I'm still here through illegal search and seizures and a great lawyer. But I don't got to be here right now. So I count my blessings. And because of that, I also give back to you, giving you gain. This probably not going to save everybody life, but it's somebody going to wake up from this video. The point being, I ran to somebody today at the car wash. And he was like, oh, bro, I seen you, with, I seen you, you know, you're busting moves, you're doing well, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I want to get in real estate. He's like, you know, what should I do? And it's the first thing. When you want to get into any one of these avenues of selling drugs, what did you do? You had to actually learn the game. You can't go to the block and just, I don't care if I give you work or give you money. If this is your first time ever touching drugs, you don't know how to cook it, you don't know how to compress it, you don't know how to do bag it, you don't know how to do anything. If this is your first time selling drugs, how do you expect to go to the block with no mentorship? How do you expect to go to the block with no big homie? You have to learn either game, but what game is actually going to end up with the results you really want for your life? So I want to give you one quick, one, one little quick breakdown on an easier scenario, right? That's the grand macro scope of real estate versus dope game. But let's look at one house, right? 